Hello everyone, and welcome to the Net at Work video series for Sage X3. This will be the first in a series of videos designed for both novice and experienced users to make the most of their investment in Sage X3. These will be short videos uh, focusing on a variety of detailed topics. In this session, we will be looking at Sage X3's general overview to show you how to navigate the system, as well as demonstrate key features and functionality that are pervasive throughout the system. So let's begin. Hopefully you can see my desktop, and you will notice that I can access Sage through a variety of browsers. I can choose any HTML browser, including Google Chrome, Firefox, Explorer, even Apple Safari, or Microsoft Edge. So when I launch my browser, one of the first things you'll notice is that uh, it's pointing to an X3 server. This server can be located on any machine of my choice. It could be on a public cloud, it could be on a private cloud, or it can be on a server in my office on-premise. The next thing it's going to do is prompt me for my credentials. My username and password will not only dictate my security settings, but also dictate my entire experience throughout the system. You will notice that the first thing it uh, uh, loads up is my landing page. In this example, I am uh, logged in as an admin, but my role is that of a CFO. So it brought me to my CFO's dashboard. This dashboard is a series of widgets or reports that are all linked together via a variety of filters of my choice. So I can use these filters to change that information however I see fit. So if I wanted to look at a particular company, I can simply apply that filter and all of my data for all of the reports gets immediately uh, changed. I can also uh, change the fiscal year or the period that I'm looking at. This is just one example of a landing page. If I was a production manager, my landing page might have a completely different look and feel and uh, key performance indicators would be completely different. Sage offers a series of predefined landing pages that can be customized or tailored to your personal preferences. You can also create landing pages uh, that are, uh, can be either graphical or display a process view. Let me give you an example of that. So if I clicked on my discrete manufacturing, uh, I can see not a menu with KPIs, but rather a process flow that details how the data flows through my system. This is more than just a menu. This is actually a graphical representation of a process flow. I can insert or remove tasks that I do not use. And I can click on any of these buttons to actually get into the navigation. You'll notice on this dashboard that I also have other tabs that I can reference to look at certain uh, key information. The other thing you may notice is that on the very top of the screen, I can always hit my home button and it'll take me right back to the last dashboard that I was using from anywhere in the menu. Further along, I can see the user that I'm logged in with and I can look up a role details or I can switch to a mobile uh, type of view that allows me to look at a screen designed more for a touch screen type of interface. So if I was using a tablet and my screen was about three quarters of the size of my natural screen, you'll notice that the buttons are much bigger so that I can access them by touching on the button. Uh, if I wanted to click on customers as an example, I could use this via my tablet while I'm on the road and click on any customer and see all kinds of information related to this particular customer. I would get a customer dashboard, but at my ellipses here, I can also link down to invoices, returns, deliveries, or orders that are associated with this particular customer. I can look at posted information, non-posted information, and I can drill into any of these transactions from my uh, user screen. If I make my screen uh, full size again, 
you'll notice that the uh, menu also has uh, other icons. I have a traditional help uh, button and I also have a, a navigator which will bring up my full menu. Inside of my full menu I can do a search for any of the features or functions that I want to access today. So let's go ahead and click on uh, suppliers and you'll see that immediately the system will highlight any function that has the word suppliers into it and take me to that area of the menu. If the supplier screen is something that I access often, I can click on the star next to the name to uh, add that to my list of favorites. Your favorites will always appear here at the top and we can see that suppliers just got added to my list of favorite functions. Once I click on a function, the system will bring me into a data entry mode or a view mode depending on my security settings. So at the moment we are launching the customer screen and we can see that the screen is divided into three different areas. Over on the left I have a list of customers that I uh, I'm allowed to look at and if I make this section larger by scrolling this window I can see all kinds of columns or data associated with my customer view. I can always search uh, based on customer ID or customer name and the system will do a, a contains type of search to find the customer I'm looking for but I can also change that boolean function to be begins with ends with equal to not equal to etc. I can always clear, clear the filter to take me back to my view. Now I can make this a smaller view or I can actually hide it altogether by clicking on the arrow and giving me more real estate for my eventual customer screen. The main area of the screen is dedicated to information related to the customer that I'm looking at in this example Food City. As I scroll down on my uh, scroll bar here you'll notice that the system has all kinds of sections associated with this customer profile. I can click on any of these tabs to zoom right to that customer area. This responsive design is designed for a web type of application. So if I was launching this via a uh, touch screen I could simply swipe my thumb to the area of the choice and it will scroll over to that section. Over on the right hand side I also have a series of options to drill down into further invest information related to this customer. So if I wanted to see my uh, accounting risk assessment of this customer, the system will already know the link to that customer and take me to uh, the areas to identify risk or what my last operations were for this customer. I can simply click on the X to close the page and it will take me right back to my main customer view upon which time I can access any of the other views as well. If I exit out of here, the system will take me right back to my main menu. One of the very nice things about having a web enabled interface is the ability to do generic searches. Think of a Google style search and we can always do that by clicking on our magnifying glass. The magnifying glass will allow us to type in a series of letters or uh, numbers and that could have been a customer number, it could have been an invoice number, a customer PO, uh, and it automatically gives you a short window with the list of results. If I press enter, the system will do a search for all of the features associated with this uh, letter combination. You can see that it's not only returning a list of functions that have the word ABC associated with them, but also all kinds of data, including uh, customers, orders, or anything that has the letters ABC associated with them. By clicking on any hyperlink, I can jump right to that transaction or record of my choice. The system also has a uh, intuitive business intelligence add-on. Let's navigate over to that intelligence add-on that I have already loaded here on a different browser. 
This business intelligence tool works very similarly to the dashboards we looked at, but also has the ability of customizing reports at will in real time. So if, for example, I click on my invoice by customer, I can see here that I've defined the system to look at the year, and then I can drill down into the customer and then drill down into the document number. The results are going to show me the year. If I scroll, if I drill down on the year, it will show me the list of customers that contributed to this total quantity sold number. If I further click on a customer, it'll show me all of the invoices that I've transacted to give me that total. If I wanted, however, to move this data around, I can simply drag and drop information. So if I move my year over to my pivot area, the information will be rearranged so that I can pivot on my year. And now I can see 2018, 2019, 2020, and so forth, uh, all side by side so I can do comparisons. I can also rearrange this data by rearranging the information that it drills into. So if, if I was interested in looking at what products I'm selling, I can simply move the product code in front of the customer. And now I'm looking at a year by year comparison of all of the items that I've sold. And I can click on an item and drill down and to see all the customers that have purchased that item because the customer is now associated next to the product code. Each of these reports can be looked at in a uh, graph or data type view. They can also be exported over to Excel. Or I can rearrange these in a more graphical type of analysis and bring them together in dashboard type views. So a dashboard type view is, again, a series of reports that are linked together via a number of filters or other criteria that I've set up. Keep in mind that security is also embedded into this business intelligence tool so that if I wanted to generate this report and distribute it out automatically to my salespeople, each salesperson would only see their list of customers that they're allowed to see, whereas a manager might be able to see all customers. This is embedded security, and I only have to create the report once to distribute it out, and I don't have to create a report by rep, allowing you to very quickly uh, create new reports, analyze data, and distribute it out to the team without requiring a lot of technical work or additional reports being created. I hope this was intuitive. I hope you can begin to see some of the power within uh, Sage X3. If there's anything uh, that we have not shown you in this overview, please feel free to reach out to us and we'd be glad to uh, uh, look at this further. Again, my name is Ralph Ceccarelli from Net at Work and please feel free to reach out to me or any member of our staff for further assistance. Thank you.